Well, well. Hi there. I'm here to tell you about recent changes in Zig 0.14. Sorry for AI voice. I'm not a good speaker myself. So, there are new features and changes, in no particular order. In the Allocator Interface V table, we got a new method, Remap. Now we can ask the allocator to expand or shrink a memory block with possible reallocation. Here is the signature. Okay, this one is my favorite. New branch hint built-in function allows giving a hint to the compiler about possible branch frequency. Its arguments can be likely for branches that are expected to be taken most of the time, unlikely for branches that are expected to be taken rarely, cold, for branches that are expected to almost never be taken, and unpredictable, for branches that we expect to be hard for the branch predictor so the compiler can put in extra work to try and make this code branchless. Okay, this one is just a little bug fix, but an interesting one. So, in the following code, we can see a bar function getting some value as an argument. This value is a block, increasing the foo variable by 1. And we expect it to be computed just once, so the final compile log should print 1. But in previous Zig versions, it was printing 2 because of a bug. In newer version, everything is OK. Now, a feature I like. We can declare dick literals instructs representing any constant values. For example, it could be a default value, and we can refer to it like an enum literal. Could be useful for my chess engine. Next one is a new built-in function field type. As the name suggests, it allows us to get the type of a struct field at compile time. Simple, but useful. Another little change. Now, we can get the address of a variable before it has been declared. This allows us to create cyclic or self-referential data structures. I guess it's the first time I see fuzzing in a standard library. But here it is. It's pretty simple for now. No fancy type-based generation or anything. Just a single function fuzz input for now. But I expect it to grow in the future. Okay, I found out this one is a very controversial one. So if we label a switch statement after that, we can use continue with that label and a value to jump to a specific branch, something very close to a controlled go-to. In the code example, on the switch statement, we first jump into the first branch, then into the second branch with a continue statement, then into the third branch, and return after, passing the test. I'm not a big fan of this feature, since I feel like Zig's style is to avoid unnecessary complexity and features. But here they are. I just hope it's really useful for someone. Okay, another bug fix. In previous versions of Zig, we could run the following code, putting bar error value into the first variable, which shouldn't support it. So it's fixed now, and this code will not compile. Now, we cannot define two different things with the same name. The following code will not compile anymore. For packed structs, now we can compare them using the equality operator without converting them first. Not a big deal, but nice to have it. Okay, this one is huge, I believe. In the past, we could use the compile time known value of page size. Now we cannot since it's a runtime value, but we at least have minimum and maximum values at compile time. For runtime value, there is a new function page size. 
In the standard library, we have a lot of renames to make it follow the Zig style guide. For example, in this code, enum values of type info are renamed from title case to snake case. There are a lot of renames, but migration should be straightforward. More in the standard library. There are two new allocators. First, the debug allocator. It's a rewritten version of general purpose allocator with support for runtime page size discussed earlier. It now makes fewer active mappings, so we're getting better performance, like 10% better in compiler benchmark. Another one is a simultaneous multi-processing allocator. It's a multi-threaded allocator with a lot of optimizations designed for release fast mode. Gotta go fast. Benchmarks are not showing much difference, though. Okay, last, but nice one. In the standard library, we are getting support for ZIG object notation files parsing both at compile time via directly importing Zon files and at runtime using functions from the Zon.pars namespace. Okay, that's basically all. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, subscribe. I'm planning to make more of them.